Ensconced in pleasure and gifted with physical beauty, enthralling, dazzling, captivating. Long after you die, I will still be young, beautiful, and adored by everyone whose life I touch. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Masquerade Monday and a new lore video about everyone's favorite degenerates, the Toreador, the fourth in my series on vampire clans. The Toreador spend their lives buried in pleasure. From their perspective, when the sun goes down, the night awakens an eternal and wondrous world. Everything is filled with awe and terror, politics and sensual delights, the profound and the profane, and the undeniable undercurrent of the grizzly. More than other clans, the Toreador can easily become jaded and bitter. They often succumb to apathy or fight the eventual boredom of unchanging immortality by playing at rivalries. An excess of the stimulations they cherish can turn them into slaves of the sensations they seek. The most debased Toreador can become true monsters, sinking to unimaginable levels of depravity in order to feel anything at all. The kindred of Clan Toreador often involve themselves greatly in the mortal world. Whether enjoying the proximity to the blush of life or developing cults of doting followers, their reasons for doing so vary from night to night. To hear the Toreador tell it, they are the muses of a desperate world, inspiring mortals through their beauty or patronage. They are responsible for the legends of vampires who seduce and entice their prey with charm and eroticism. Famous and infamous, Clan Toreador relies on the facades of civility and grace for their survival. The history of the clan begins with its founder, Arakel, a mortal painter and sculptress in the First City, a topic I'll be covering in an upcoming lore video about Cain. Famed throughout the land for her work, Arakel was embraced by Cain's child, Enoch, and became the oldest antediluvian, followed shortly by her twin brother, Malkov's embrace, the founder of the Malkavian clan. I made a video all about the Malkavians, which you can watch here. After painting a mural on which the past, present, and future of kindred society was depicted, Cain, seeing a terrible future portrayed for his race, cursed Arakel with the affliction that influences Toreador today. The art that Arakel loved would now be her utmost obsession and distraction above all other things. The Toreador had a strong presence in ancient Greece and attributed many of the classic tales as distorted versions of actual events between mortals and Cainites. Their squabbling, however, weakened the Greek civilization of Mycenae. Since the clan drew their sustenance from the population, the Mycenaeans became too weak to defend themselves from foreign invaders. After the fall of Mycenae, the Toreador wandered across the Mediterranean, seeking shelter with the Roman Ventru or the Carthaginian Bruja. At first, the Toreador supported both sides of the war that eventually broke out between the Ventru and the Bruja, but when it became clear that Carthage would lose, many Toreador abandoned it in favor of Rome and brought with them tales of debauchery that propelled the Ventru to raise the city to the ground. I made videos about the Bruja, Ventru, and their conflicts, the first of which you can watch here. When Rome began to decline, a Toreador named Mikhail left Rome to help found Constantinople, much to the shock of many Toreador elders, and Constantinople remained a beacon of Canaanite power and glory until its sacking during the Fourth Crusade in 1204, with many of the vampire population having fled or been destroyed. In the Dark Ages, the Toreador were made up of minstrels, painters, poets, and actors. Many Toreador insinuated themselves into the structures of the Catholic Church, primarily because the Church was one of the only supporters of art at the time. Following the formation of the Camarilla, some Toreador who did not support the faction left the clan for the Sabbat. I made videos about both of these factions, the first of which you can watch here. The Renaissance is well remembered as a golden age of Clan Toreador. As one of the most powerful clans in Europe, the Toreador prospered in France as a cultural nexus, enjoying works of Michelangelo, Da Vinci, and Shakespeare. Many Toreador began to turn away from spiritually motivated preservationism to a self-serving hedonism that continues into modern nights. The Toreador reveled in the Victorian age. The Industrial Revolution led to a phenomenon called leisure time that only the rich had been previously afforded. Theater, music, and art spread like never before all around the globe. While the influence of the church had waned in people's lives, and consequently the Toreador influence over the church, those of the clan who had latched themselves to business prospered. Toreador loved money as much as they loved beauty, and now it was accessible outside of the feudal system. The Victorian age also cemented the power of the Toreador within the Camarilla. 
In Modern Knights, the Toreador play their games as they always have, albeit at a slightly more frantic pace. The recent innovations of cinema, television, and the internet means that new forms of art and expression are being discovered almost daily. Many knights are filled with bickering Toreador over what can be considered true art, and each Toreador's opinion is as varied as the definition of art itself. Clan Toreador is exclusionary and insular, with no formal overarching hierarchy. Gatherings are called affairs of the clan, with no mandatory attendance. These can range from parties, dinners, art showings, or actual meetings. The Toreador of a city organize themselves into guilds with the oldest and most influential Toreador at the head. Inside these guilds, there are two divisions, the artistes and the poseurs. The artistes consist of sculptors, painters, musicians, and writers who consider themselves the real Toreador, who represent the inheritors of the clan's original goals and values. The poseurs consist of failed artists, professional critics, and those who consider themselves to be their life's masterpiece. It should be noted that these terms, artiste and poseur, are not how the Toreador define themselves. Rather, they are used and flung derisively at each other. Like most canines, the Toreador have variants within their bloodline. The Nephilim were part bloodline and part cult that revered the fallen Methuselah Michael as an embodiment of the archangel of the same name. Since his death, which they refer to as his ascension, they wait for someone who can inherit his divinity. The line was founded by two surviving childer of Michael. The pair devised a rite that could purify other Toreador for their eventual deification, christening them childer of Michael in spirit, if not literally. These Nephilim were infused with a longing for the departed Methuselah that even superseded the aforementioned clan curse. Since none of them survived the Dark Ages, it can be assumed that they went extinct. The Islamic Toreadors are the Rayin al Fen, commonly nicknamed as scribes since the majority favor calligraphers, writers, and architects. They are centered in Egypt and Persia in the best parts of the city, decorating their havens with calligraphy, usually verses from the Quran. The Rayin al Fen faces a schism between its elders and neonates. While the elders seek to preserve every form of art, including idols of lost religions, the younger scribes see this as an affront against Allah and are usually ready to use violence to remove them. The Sabat Toreador, also called Toreador Antitribu, are the dark mirror images of their Camarilla brethren. Although they are no less beautiful than their cousins, their minds are twisted and warped, and the Antitribu often lose themselves watching others suffer, much like their Camarilla siblings lose themselves watching a beautiful painting. Whether the variance of the Antitribu weakness is just a variance due to circumstance or an actual bloodline variance is disputed. Within the Toreador, Antitribu is an actual variant bloodline, though. Toreador, who as mortals were members of the Sabbat's Xantosa Revenant family. Oversimple Revenant family members are ghouls for whom the condition has become hereditary, and who are capable of generating vitae within their own veins. Xantosa are born with the vicissitude ability, the trademark discipline of Clan Samichi, also known as their art of flesh and bone shaping, and when embraced as a Toreador, they retain this bloodline discipline instead of acquiring the celerity of mainline Toreador, and they retain their Xantosa familial weakness of hedonistic addiction instead of acquiring the Toreador and Titribu weakness of compulsion toward cruelty. A secret lineage of Toreador and Titribu, the darkly beautiful Volgiri, were experts in the blackest pursuits of art, employing vicissitude to produce twisted and horrific works of repugnant beauty. As part of a secret agreement, the Volgiri have recently been allowed to reintegrate into the Camarilla Toreador, having defected from the Sabbat. The jaded main body of the Toreador clan got centuries worth of darker arts to enjoy, as well as access to a discipline uncommon among the Camarilla. While the Volgiri received false names and lineages to conceal their true origins from other Camarilla clans. It is said that while the Ventru are the mind of the Camarilla, the Toreador are its soul. The Toreador are the greatest supporters of many of the Camarilla's traditions, most notably that of Elysium, a neutral ground for the Camarilla vampires of a given city. The Toreador tend to inhabit the role of keeper of Elysium. They are responsible for both the security of the location as well as for planning the event. This often requires knowing a lot about the attendees, knowing that, for example, the Bruja and Nosferatu Primogen don't get along, so you can plan to keep them separated to avoid conflict or keep them uncomfortably close to each other to encourage it. This is where
where the Toreador are in their element, showcasing their latest pieces and practicing their highly effective and sometimes deadly form of social maneuvering. From the outside, most other clans think of one face of the Toreador, but see another. When speaking of them, most envision Toreador as the artistes, billowy-shirted, frock-coated fops who crow about the beauty of the ages, lamenting their lost humanity. In reality, outsiders are less likely to meet such characters, given as they are to sequestering themselves away to work on their latest masterpiece. Far more often encountered are those Toreador whose unlives have become dedicated to the kindred social scene. Toreador are often a large contingent of the city's harpies, opinion leaders and trendsetters to whom other kindred look when it comes to matters of taste, style, philosophy, or politics, and, having spent years with their conniving clanmates, they are more than capable of ruining someone's reputation with a pithy comeback or a damning piece of gossip whispered in just the right ear. Among kindred society, there are two main forms of currency, secrets and favors. The former are considered mostly black market and tend to be the domain of the Nosferatu, while the latter is the publicly accepted currency. The Harpies are the arbiters of social standing. They're the ones you should suck up to. They're a combination of mob fixers who can match up someone with a need with someone capable of providing it, and bankers for the complex web of favors and boons called prestitation that ties Camarilla society together. They keep track of who owes what to whom and can help facilitate favorable exchanges. The Toreador portray themselves as the vampires closest to the living, breathing pulse of the humans around them. Although argument could be made that the Bruja share this honor with them, claiming that this is what keeps them so vital and modern. Clan members are often the first ones to be aware of what mortals are wearing, eating, buying, and who they're sleeping with. Almost to the last, the Toreador are attractive in some way, whether the traditional beauty of a runway model or the dangerous allure of something more predatory. The degenerates augment their physical beauty with a sense of personal style, which may take the form of expensive couture, avant-garde streetwear, or something from this year's Paris catwalks designed to emphasize their appealing qualities. This isn't to say that ugly Toreador don't exist. Indeed, those gifted with less physical beauty often go that much farther with their choice of style. Any Toreador are fond of having mortal families or assuming mortal identities in order to capture that breath of life that is denied to them. The constant pressure that the proximity to mortals can elicit, however, can cause a Toreador to break down, losing all of their creativity and motivation in the process, resulting in a debauched individual that desperately searches for the next kick to experience the feeling of being mortal again, eventually turning to mortal vices like drugs, in order to feel just this one aspect. The older a Toreador gets, and the more mortal associates they have, the more likely a burnout is to occur. Other vampires have to deal with this too, but no clan suffers so uniformly under this aspect of their existence than the Toreador. Art is the cornerstone of the clan, defining its clan curse and shaping the preferences of every Toreador. The Toreador are not artists by choice as much by nature, as each Toreador desperately searches for something that anchors their passion and preserves it from withering from the ages. The desire to preserve art and artists is more often than not the impetus for an embrace. As such, many Toreador struggle when they discover that the talent that originally brought them into the clan is falling out of favor, or that their creativity has suffered under the weight of the ages. The relativity of art is one of the major conflict points within the clan, especially between elders and neonates who refuse to think of modern developments as an art form. Common accepted forms of art can be everything within the clan, as long as it is prestigious. Cooking, for example, is not a widely spread form of art among the clan, mainly due to the vampiric inability to actually consume food. Painting and sculpting are the most iconic, but the Toreador also have a fair share of poets, artisans, dancers, actors, musicians, and even warriors and martial artists. Revenge, justice, and intrigue are also considered art forms, and many Elder Toreador commit themselves fully to this, having found ways to utterly crush their rivals and driving them to suicide without even lifting a hand. The degenerates spare no expense in appointing their havens in luxury, often with many original works of art. It is a point of pride among Toreador to have an unconventional and thus memorable haven with modern comforts. Many have striking lofts and penthouses, while the bolder among them renovate or repurpose everything from abandoned aquariums or deconsecrated churches to rooftop gardens or converted warehouse galleries in fashion-forward neighborhoods. 
As stated before, there are two rough stereotypes that clan members fall into. Artistes make up a large portion of the clan, which in modern nights can include computer graphic artists, cutting edge performance artists, and sportsmen alongside the singers, dancers, and writers. The other portion consists of businessmen, critics, and those who are simply beautiful. While the main detractors of the clan, the Nosferatu and the Bruja, complain that the Toreador coddle their child, the truth is a much more brutal one. Toreador sires are notoriously capricious, and while the subject of their embrace can be the most innovative, the most beautiful, the most now, they can easily become obsolete and embarrassing the following week. The sire then inevitably dumps the new child as soon as it is feasible, leaving the young vampire confused and struggling to make their own way. Such is the nature of the Toreador. According to Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition, these are some of the Toreador opinions on the other clans and factions. Blood-soaked barbarians. A fire may be stoked, but if left unattended, it may destroy what it once warmed. Worms breed in their vile footprints. Beauty and the beast, only without the complication of beauty. Pity them. Which is more unctuous, their smiles or their hair? If I looked like they do, I'd hide in the dark too. The tedium of it all. There are two types of these creatures, awful and absent. Aren't they supposed to turn back into pumpkins at midnight? It is a poor artist who blames his tools, but that's the only conceivable answer here. Why are older brothers always such corpulent bullies? This house needs a good cleaning. Such marvelous passion wasted on such craven dementia. Only a petty ruler acknowledges no greater purpose than himself. Now I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about the Toreador? Did you play as one in Bloodlines 1? And are you looking forward to meeting some in Bloodlines 2? Did you learn anything new about them in this video? And what clan do you think I'm covering next? I make videos multiple times a week and every Monday is Masquerade Monday, so if you enjoy what I do, please consider hitting that subscribe button. A huge shout out to Ian Watson aka Fawn Aether for his help with compiling the info for this video and for offering insight into Vampire the Masquerade lore. These videos literally could not be made without him. Thank you so very much for watching. It means the absolute world to me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!